Welcome back to Lake Lot Build. My name is John and I'm here with my wife, Leslie. Okay. So today's episode is a little bit different. So we are going to go over uh, a few different things and it's about the house build, but I'll let you uh, tell them all what it's all about today. Yeah, we're going to look at some viewer comments and questions that we've received over the last 39 episodes and uh, we'll be answering some of your most common questions. Hey, you guys are awesome. That's why I wanted to do this video it because was. our, you know, we have people that watch us from all around the world. In fact, if you could just comment where you're watching from today, so cool. that would be awesome. We love hearing from you. Yeah. We really, really do. Um, and it's made this build super special for us. We started out just thinking we'll make some videos from our, for our friends and family. And yep. now we have people that watch us from Turkey and Denmark and the Bahamas and Canada, and we're blown away. So thank you all for being a part of this. We really appreciate it. And we're so glad you're here for the ride as well. Yeah. Okay. So honey, what is your first question? I've got them all written down here. Okay. So we get a lot of questions about our size of the house and like the decks and the windows. And so can you just kind of give us a breakdown of the, the size of the house? Yeah. So, okay. So for the size of the house, the footprint of our house is 26 feet deep and it's 50 feet wide. And so that comes out to 1300 square feet per floor. Now you have to remember we have a one inch or one foot thick wall that goes around, you know, the outside. Okay. So it's a little bit smaller on the inside when you take out that foot. So what is the next one? So it's 2,600 square feet basically with the garage. Yeah, yeah. So if you take the garage out and you take the wall thickness out for the exterior walls, we are down to roughly probably 1800 square feet. Yeah, probably around 1800 square feet. It's just going to be the two of us eventually. So we didn't want a big house. Yeah. So the downstairs is considered a 1300 square foot house, which would be a three bedroom, two bath house. The upstairs is the kitchen, living and dining. And so that is how it's separated out. So we have kitchen, living, and dining upstairs, three bedrooms, two bathrooms downstairs. Mm -hmm. We have a half bath that is right over there, which is for our upstairs. And uh, it's a very basic layout and a very basic design. And that is what we went with. There's nothing special. It's, it's a simple rectangle. But what we do have that's really special, we have a 1300 square foot rooftop deck. And we also have two other decks. So what are the sizes of the other decks that we have? Okay, so the upstairs deck is 12 feet deep by 32 feet long. And the lower deck is 12 feet deep, but it's 50 feet long. Which means we have almost as much outdoor living space as we have indoors, yeah, which is really cool. Yeah, when you take into consideration <laughs> 1,300 square foot of roof top deck, I yeah. mean, it, it looks like a helipad up on there. And we had this big joke that we should paint an H <laughs> on the top of our roof. If we weren't afraid that we would get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> or a railing that goes around it. I don't know if you can land a helicopter with a railing that that's that, Probably not. that a 40 inch tall railing that goes around it. We also have this awesome window that's our main viewing window. And a lot of people ask what size it is. It's 16 feet by five feet. Yeah. And so the, the window, instead of being one sheet of glass, it's in three panels. And so we have three panels that are put together with the mullions that make it appear as one window, but it actually came delivered in three panels that were all hooked together and then it was put in. Yeah, and our house faces Southwest, so we actually also have the UV protection on yes. all of our windows. Yeah, absolutely. As, a, as an added protection. Okay, so the next one we get a lot of questions about, and it's the hardest one to answer, to be honest, you guys, and that is cost. Yes, cost. All right, you want me to start with yeah, it? Yeah, right. go ahead. So there are so many variables when we were building this house, right? What first one is, is our house is on a slope. So we're not yeah. building on a level lot. So we have a lot of concerns about, I shouldn't say concerns, a lot of cost or maybe not cost when we were doing our excavating, what we were going to find, the rock, the right. backfill, all of those. Um, that, that came in about 17,000 when okay. you look at the excavation and then all the backfill that we needed, yep. which to be honest, in this area, building on what we're building, we felt lucky. Oh, unbelievable. We were able to save 
The rocks that we found, we were able to put them to the side and we used those to build retaining walls on the front. So That's there right. was a reduction that we didn't have to build or pour concrete retaining yep. walls on the front, which is, I cannot believe that we were able to do that. And I'll put that video right here of how we made our um, landscaping rocks and yes. how we built our retaining walls out of rocks that we pulled out of the ground during excavation. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So that was the first cost, excavation. Then yeah. we had the big cost, which is our main driver, our biggest budget number. Yeah, which is concrete, mm -hmm. right? It's a concrete house, ICF house. Uh, the walls were very simple to calculate uh, how many square feet, um, I, how many cubic feet of concrete we we're going to need. But the next one was to put a concrete roof in versus just a, uh, a wood. And so the wood one, you can have a pretty good take off. The concrete, of course, is more expensive. I yes. mean, it's that's just the way it is. There's more concrete, it costs more. Um, but we felt that if we were going to have a rooftop deck, that we would pay more on the front end. Um, and then that way on the back end, we don't have to worry about shingles. We don't have to worry about hail damage. We don't have to worry about any of these things. Yeah. So that cost was was significantly more. How much did our roof cost? Our roof cost somewhere between thirty and $40,000. Yeah. Um, and that was quite, quite extensive change to the plan and it yeah. and it increased our budget quite a bit um, considering that our budget for this house is actually quite low so but it was worth it when we got up there and we saw the view had to be done yeah absolutely had to be done so really cost wise on icf what i can tell you it's going to be different in every area it's going to be different based on your rebar price your concrete price ICF block has gone up since we started building this home. Yep. ICF will always be more expensive than traditional buildings, but my house will never get blown away in a windstorm. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, you, you say it was more expensive, but then we watched the wood prices go well, that's through true. the roof, and then it was actually cheaper that's to build out of concrete than it was out of wood. And what I can tell you is that we are under $100 a square foot for the ICF dry in everything. Oh, absolutely. Probably about $75 a square foot yep. when when we add it all up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what's, the, what's the next So the one? next cost that we have to consider, um, we come in really, really good because this guy does all the plumbing, all the electrical. We did a do-it-yourself um, HVAC mini yep. split system. The cost estimate that we got from that, from the local people that were gonna install it was $9,000. And we did it ourselves for under $3,000. Yep. So we saved a lot of money on that. Um, so we're gonna end up somewhere in the neighborhood of $115 to $125 per square foot for this build. And you'll see in future videos, we're doing Ikea kitchen. Um, we love Ikea kitchens. We've done them in three homes. Yep. We're gonna do an Ikea kitchen in here. So all the labor is again on us. We'll be laying tile floors. Uh, we'll be doing all of the work with the exception of the septic system that's gonna be going in here in a couple of weeks. Septic systems are expensive yep. for this area. We're probably looking at $20,000 for our septic system. And then one of the last big things that we'll have to do is pour our driveway. And that's something that we won't do ourselves. But pretty much everything else is gonna be, again, the two of us. Yeah. <laughs> the driveway in particular, I wanted to see if I had enough of that landing map that I made the railing out. And so I went out to the, uh, to the back to Oklahoma and uh, I didn't have enough. There just wasn't enough panels that I could put together to make a driveway that is roughly 24 feet by 30 feet. Yeah. Um, that's a lot of panels and we just didn't have enough because I still have to use some panels around, you know, I'll, and we'll go through those at a later uh, episode of where else that we're going to put the panels. Okay, so let's get to some of our big viewer comments here. Okay. One that we hear all the time, and this has been in multiple videos, is where is your vapor barrier? And people really freak out about that, and I completely understand if you didn't watch, I think we've only mentioned it in one or two other videos, but why do we not have water vapor or barrier on our house? So for the walls on the outside, yeah. that's a very good question, but it's a very easy answer. The reason we did not have any waterproofing on the outside of the house is one, it is not needed because we use this product called we. There was a product that was included in the concrete pour called Zypex. Mm -hmm. And Zypex has a, it's a chemical reaction and I just call it magic. But what it does is it makes a waterproof wall. 
And so therefore we are not, the waterproofing application on the outside of the house is not needed. Right. And I actually called Zypex and talked to some of their engineers. It's a product I wasn't familiar with, so I did some due diligence and, and checking with yeah, them I wasn't familiar with it at all. and looking at them. But they actually, you see them more used in municipal works, like in sewer systems and in huge uh, concrete holding tanks. The reason why those huge concrete holding tanks don't leak water is because of Zypex. So we feel very confident with the with the vapor barrier or with the Zypex in lieu of the vapor barrier. Well, we also have had enormous rains and yeah. we live in this area which is called a karst uh, soil where the water, I mean, it, it really moves through the soil fastly and quickly where you could have serious hydrostatic pressure after a rain and we have no, we have no penetration no. of water in the basement or the walls at all, no. at all. And when you watch our videos where we're putting the wood uh, exterior uh, trim on the outside, that wood does have a rain screen behind it, not to protect the house, but to protect the wood. So we did want to allow water to move away and stay yes. away from the wood and to allow that wood to breathe that's yeah, on the outside. Yeah, so you have, if you have the wall and then you have the wood, if the wood is up against the styrofoam, then it doesn't allow the back side of that wood to, if it got wet, you know, because of each one of the boards, the water could migrate behind there. And so what we did is we put what's called a rain screen, which scoots it up just ever so slightly. Yeah. So it allows the water to drain, but it also allows the air to circulate behind it. So it won't ever rot. And the wood that we use is pressure treated lumber as well. Right. We have a video on that as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So one of the other questions that people are concerned uh, if they're not familiar with ICF, or if they're if they are familiar with ICF, the idea of termites has kind of been yes. out there. Fact or myth? I really couldn't tell you what's the propensity of termites to burrow through ICF, but some people are very concerned about it, and we get a lot of questions. How did we treat for termites? So, yeah. we did not treat for termites. The reason is is that our house on all four sides and the roof and below and below is concrete. Mm -hmm. So we have concrete walls, we have a concrete roof, and we have a concrete floor. And there's no place at our house where wood is exposed to the outside. Right. The only place that we have it is our wood trim, but the wood trim is, is mechanically fastened to it. And so there is not a place where a termite can get or have anything to eat right. um, that would be beneficial to them. So we didn't even treat for termites because mm -hmm. There's nothing for them to eat. Our deck is concrete and steel. All of our siding outside is steel. Right. We only have the wood as the trim and it's pressure treated. Yeah. So therefore, what was the use? Now, if you do have a house that would have a wood roof and you're worried about the little termites making a burrow and going up the styrofoam all the way and maybe find the mm -hmm. wood in your joist and rafters and things like that, you simply treat the ground like you would a conventional home. You right. can have them come out and spray or whatever the termite um, controllers would do. Right, and they have bait stations and all kinds of things that they can that they can do for that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, another question or concern that we got when people watched the suspended garage floor. We had two concerns. One was people were really freaked out at the idea that cars might be parking on top of the area where they were sleeping. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal about concrete in suspension. Uh, it works really well. Uh, that's why they have make, you know, gir you know, the bridge girders, uh, yeah. skyscrapers, right? You know, you take the lard, the tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa. The Burj Khalifa is made out of concrete, mm -hmm. right? It's not made out of steel. It's made out of concrete. I mean, it's got steel rebar in it, but it's not the construction like you're used to in the United States where you have your steel and your concrete pieces like that. And so we've lived, you know, in, in, in different countries and been all around the world. And have noticed that the rest of the world, this is how they do it. Right. When we lived in the Middle East, it never occurred to me that I had 30 stories above my head when I was sleeping. Yeah. Which we did. Yeah. But it never, all concrete, all concrete never, never thought about it. Yeah. So, you know, with the, the system light deck, you know, the engineers, you know, they engineer the amount, the size of the rebar, how much rebar, the placement of the rebar. All of those are all taken into consideration of the design of it so that it is truly uh, structurally sound. Right. And if you look at I, the, uh, the light deck in a cross section, it literally looks like T's 
like bridge girders. It's like yes. having a bridge over uh, for our floor that we park our cars on. Right. So when you look at a cross section, it's a really, it's really simple. It's, it's we're not nothing, worried. No, it's <laughs> it's nothing cutting edge at all. Right. But I understand it's different from conventional residential building in this area, especially. So yeah. But we're not worried. We're completely safe. Engineers have our backs. We're not going to worry about yeah. it. Yeah. The second part, the second concern, I think, comes from our friends in the north and our and our neighbors, maybe even in Canada. Some people were wondering. Where is the drain for your garage? True. Now, when we have been in different countries, either uh, um, in the in the cold climates, there are floor drains in the garages, and that usually occurs when you have the ice and everything on your vehicle, and then you pull into a into a garage, and it's warmer, and then it starts to melt, and they have almost a, like a V, like you would see at a car wash, mm -hmm. you know, that all slopes to a center and then gets removed. Our garage has a slope towards the door, which is just like a typical garage. So there's nothing special about our garage. It just, it slopes out. The likelihood of having that much ice or snow in the area that we live in is just, it just doesn't happen. It's very rare. We get maybe two snowfalls a year <clears throat> and they're usually less than a foot, usually way less than a foot where we get, you know, two to four inches maybe yeah. per snowfall. And then it's 60 degrees, two days later, snow is gone. Yeah. It's just not a concern in this part of the country. In our, in our garage floor, we'll do the, you know, the, the epoxy, um, you know, to make it look nice, uh, sure. the epoxy so that it is waterproof just to make sure that if you know if you come in and the water is on your car or mm -hmm. there's some ice that if it doesn't want to absorb into the concrete and then you know make wet spots you know in the ceiling down below or anything like that um yeah well it'll be have epoxy um coating on it like a regular garage floor excellent okay we've got a couple more here all right what do we got next so um there were some concerns about cold joints in our walls because if you watch a couple of the original pours on the channel uh, that we did have separate concrete pours, and so people were concerned about cold joints. So, uh, do we have cold joints? Yes, the answer is yes, we do. But with any concrete pour, you will have cold joints, mm -hmm. and it just depends on where you want to put them. So, our cold joints, if you want to start from the bottom for our footer to our, our wall, footer and wall was poured in a monolithic pattern so that we do not have a cold joint from there at the bottom right and so then it comes up to roughly nine feet uh, and that pour was stopped just shy but not to the top so it's about the middle of a block and then you have the rebar that sticks up in those and then the next pour pours on top of that and so right. you have the rebar that connects the two pieces together so you don't have your horizontal or you don't have a vertical and you don't have any shearing or anything like that and that is with the rebar right. but it's encased in the styrofoam so that you don't have to worry about water penetrations or anything like that right and the concrete roof if you if you go and review that video as well the roof um, concrete actually pours from the side back down into the walls again tying everything together yes yeah yeah where that where that cold joint occurs is not where not at the intersection it's actually down a little bit and down in here so that rebar right. comes up and makes a turn and so that that cold joint follows down in the middle of a block and it's the same way in the garage when they did the garage it's it's a little bit less so that it actually makes that turn so that that curve part is not at a vulnerable place where you could have shearing or anything like that if there's any movement Okay, last question. Okay. Back to the roof. Yes. What's, so what's people want to know, how are you going to waterproof the roof? And let me take the first half. You can take the second half. Okay. So the first half is we use Zypex in the roof. Yep. Um, but again, I, I am a curious person. So when I called Zypex, I asked them, do we need to do anything besides just using Zypex in the roof? And they said yes. Uh, because in a home like this, any kind of wind, weight, anything, micro cracks can occur. Now, Zypex is going to go in and it's going to cure those cracks and it's going to fix them, but it may take two or three rains before the Zypex can have that chemical reaction to do that. And in the meantime, in those two or three rains, you may get leaks. So that was news to me. 
Um, but I'm glad we knew before, you know, we got, we got too far down the road. So we have Zypex, that's number one. Number two, <laughs> we needed an exterior uh, waterproofing method on top of the Zypex. Yep. And that's where we're at now. We've had some successes and some failures and currently searching. Yeah, so what we, <clears throat> what we used was a product, a waterproofing uh, product um, that you put onto it. And that waterproofing product then had a top coat that had a non-slip um, granulated stuff in it. The waterproofing coat worked great. It's awesome. It's an elastomeric product. Yeah, it's great. It would work great. The top coat, on the other hand, is not. But it's not a complete failure because there are places and places that the, the, the adherence, the, the stickiness, they did great. But then there's places that have just slowly bubbled and delaminated. And so you have places that work perfect, places that don't work perfect. So right now, it is still a work in progress. It's a work in progress. I, I actually talked to the light deck engineers this week, <laughs> and uh, their best bet was, you know, we need to find a good roofing company that yeah. can come out and put a product that's walkable on it, but something probably like a TPO. So we'll need to go back and we'll need to do something to cover the roof, either with a silicone product, a TPO-like product. Yep. Um, but ultimately we're going to party on the roof oh yeah so oh, it's, it's going to happen <laughs> so we got to have something we can walk on and we're going to get it figured out yeah but you know you can lose sleep over it and you can get all upset and things but the other thing is we're just going to do it ourselves or we can make a call and say you guys are awesome you have pointed out amazing things to us that have actually changed some of our design ideas. So if you know something about how to treat a flat concrete roof, I'm all, hey, I'm, I am all ears. We are I, all ears. I, I, will, uh, I will listen to anybody because the worst that's going to happen is I'm going to say no. Or we're going to say... Or we tried that. Or we tried that and or, it didn't work, right? So, let's check it out. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. right now, we're that is really the only thing in our house that he is still causing us heartburn, heart ulcers, <laughs> sleepless nights. Oh, I don't know if it's that <laughs> bad, but it's pretty close. It's pretty yeah. close. Yeah, thank you guys again. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. And we still got a lot more fun to... Uh, we got a lot to do. Yeah, we definitely we still got a lot to do. But I'm telling you, when this thing gets done, we're going to have to make some episodes of just the parties that we're going to have because we're going to have to enjoy the hell yeah, out of this thing. We are. So please subscribe if you're not already. Thank you for being on this ride with us and stick around because we have, this is number 40, episode 40. This is 40? And we've got a lot more to come. Oh so gosh. thanks guys. Stick around. Take care. See you guys.